Hey gang, this is Shane. Uh, probably a lot of you have run into uh, your spider breath breaking on the back of your uh, washer drum. Uh, I'm in the process right now of uh, making my own. So just getting started here. I've got some uh, roughly two and a quarter inch wide by uh, eighth of an inch thick uh, flat iron here, and I'm. You see the piece of paper there? That's uh, that's basically a 120 degree angle there, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna cut each end there. So I've got a 120 degree angle on the end of these, and then I'll weld it together to form my uh, tri bracket, as I prefer to call it. And then uh, I'll add some fittings. I'll cut the cut them to length, add some uh, half inch by half inch little pieces to the ends where I'll drill holes, tap in threads, where it'll screw in, and then later I'll show where I actually mount the, uh, the, the shaft that comes off of this that goes out of the, the plastic drum that houses this whole thing and onto the pulley for the motor. So stand by for the next uh, piece here. Okay, so here's a quick shot of uh, all the little pieces cut off the hundred, to form the 120 degree angles on the end of each of these so we'll get those uh get this welded together and uh take it a separate time here we may have to bend the ends of these pieces to you know to kind of form fit the drum but we'll we'll see about that anyhow uh off to some welding here well here's our bracket welded together that's the back side and the tricky part here is trying to get this you can see here if i come around over here i'm trying to i cut off about uh, where is that piece hang on a second here it is right here you can see right here i cut about that much off of the the end of this bracket here because this is going to stick up a little about the same height as the original bracket so anyhow I had to cut that off over here and pretty tricky to see if this is really centered but I'm pretty sure I've got it uh, where I want it and I'm going to weld that Hummer on there You can see here we got the shaft welded on. Not the best welding job in the world, but uh, I think I've got it centered and it's straight up and down. And I need to test it out, put it in a block with a hole in it and spin it and see if it's spinning true. But I guess it's too late now whether it spins true or not. But the next challenge is going to be getting this little this little seal. I need to straighten that little edge right there a little bit and polish this all up some more. But this has got to ride. This needs to set down on here like this. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this, but I need to probably try to weld that on there um, as well. But that sits that sits down in the seal on the back side of the of the rear tub. So anyhow, uh, making some progress. If you're gonna weld, I recommend getting a, one of those auto darkening helmets. You know, I've got one of these old cheap ones that just, it's black from the get go and it's really hard to see what's going on without uh, some daylight. So that, that always helps with welding. Anyhow, uh, we'll come at you again if we uh, uh, make some, some strides forward here. Looks like it's spinning pretty true. I just put the bottom bearing in on the, I'm just stuck it down on the back of the tub just to see if it spins pretty true and looks like it's gonna be all right. We'll see. So now we just gotta figure out how we're gonna attach the bracket to the drum and get that mounted. And I've got a new seal kit that I'm probably gonna order. And Maybe we'll get this thing working after after all.
little bit better look at it. Looks pretty true. Anyhow, onward and to the next step. So here we are. Just I uh, just want to give you a quick shot of me tapping holes in the uh, in the brackets on the end here. Uh, made a little mistake this morning with the first hole. Tried to use my uh, cordless drill and to gently tap the uh, first hole and snap the uh, snap the bit off. And that was a bear to get out of there. Um, anyhow, just a quick shot of that. So I'm going to set it on the uh, drum, screw it in, make sure it fits right, and set it in the tub and spin it to make sure we're true. And if we are, I think we're good to go. She's got a little bit of wobble to it. I don't know. We'll have to see. Certainly not... Uh, banging around like it was before the bracket broke or after the bracket first bracket broke anyhow um we'll give it a go it's gonna have to be close enough we'll see what happens here's a shot of the, the front tub just to show you what the the damage looked like you can see how the on the drum when the bracket was broken you can see how the the drum was just bounce around in there and just tore the, the whole front of this off. There's a lip on here. I'm going to take a scroll saw. I'm just going to cut all the way around here and cut all this off and stand it up a little bit and then take it to the, get a pressure washer, or take it to the car wash and just clean both this and the back tub out. You can see, you can see down in here where Part of the tub was, I'm not quite sure what the heck was rubbing right there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand that off a little bit. I've got some special um, auto body epoxy that I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna fill that. Cause that's pretty thin right there. I could buy a new tub for a hundred and whatever, but this epoxy I've got, I'll try to find, find it and give you a shot of that, but it fills these holes really nice. And it's, I mean, once it goes on, it's not coming off. So, uh, anyhow, so we'll clean up on the tubs. And I've got the bracket over here. I just cleaned it all off with some some brake cleaner. Took off, I took a wire brush first and just uh, rubbed off all that carbon residue on there. And hosed it off, or sprayed it down with some brake cleaner. Oh, that's a nasty looking weld. The welds are pretty ugly, but they're solid. I've taken this thing out in the driveway and just um, banged on it and it's not going anywhere, but I may have to fill these welds with some epoxy or whatever, just so they don't, when I get, when this gets painted, there's no leaks or cracks in the paint, but um, anyhow, should, should be fine. Um, anyhow, just a few more items to go here and we'll start putting it back together hey just wanted to show you real quick uh, I got these tubs cleaned up and uh, mentioned I was gonna fill these uh, these scrapes that were pretty big where the drum was digging into this when the, the, the bracket was broken you can see in there I just Mix this stuff up. I'll show you in a minute, and then uh, swizzled it in there with a little dowel, and then took a took a little auto body look, uh, uh, whatever you call these gizmos, a little spatula or whatever for doing body work on cars. Just smooth that in there, really smooth. Uh, didn't worry about leaving the excess on there. That stuff just sticks. I mean, it's just it's really good stuff. And here's here's what it is right here. You can see that it's part number zero five eight eight three A and B. And it's blue as you can see, and it's called uh, Rigid Parts Repair. I got it on Amazon, I believe. Did some body work last summer on one of my cars. Actually finished that job before this job. Uh, the car got hailed, totally hailed out the night that I finished that job, which was. Bizarre coincidence. Anyhow, got the tubs all cleaned out. Got the uh, 
the big tub cleaned out. Um, I'll show you a little bit later how I'm going to, what I'm going to do here with the, well, actually this is the outside, with the inside of the tub and the, the bearing there. But I'm going to order the bearings and a new rubber seal on the in, for the inside. Here's a bearing, there's a bearing on the inside, and then there's a seal on the inside. And uh, I think I'm going to get, I think I've got that in my cart on eBay for about $17. So anyhow, I've got about, uh, counting the, Counting the dies, the tap, a couple other odds and ends, the screws. I'm going to have about $45 in parts into this. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit less. Anyhow, I think it's uh, it's going to work. So, be uh, putting this. Well, actually, I got to get the bracket. I got this all cleaned up today. I think I mentioned this already. I'm going to get this painted at an auto body shop. I think I've got a. A place that'll probably do it for me for free. Anyhow, I'm gonna get this primed really good, painted with auto body paint. It should hold up to water and detergent for for years. Uh, so once I get that this painted, we'll put it back together and uh, get some warm weather. We'll see if we can get it to, to wash and close. Anyhow, uh, talk to you in a bit. Hey, just a quick shot here. This bearing, this little cup that used to be on the, it used to be attached to the the shaft and the aluminum cast iron or the the cast aluminum bracket. I really couldn't weld that back to the shaft, so this is just going to sit in the in the seal here. And I'm making a rubber seal that I'm or just a cover that I'm going to put over this, so that we don't get water and stuff in here in these bearings. So I've used some more of that rigid repair epoxy. And I got to get this on here right now before it gets too dry. So just a quick shot there. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to show you the original bracket here. I forgot to do that earlier. But anyhow, hope that's a piece of, of uh, just, uh, just, just a tire tube that I had laying around that I cleaned up and roughed the edges up and going to use for a seal. So now you can see where the drive shaft's going to, the shaft's going to go through there and out the back of the drum. And hopefully uh, that'll keep water out of those bearings. But uh, that should dry in about 15 minutes. But over here, this is the original um, cast iron bracket, or the cast aluminum bracket. And you can see it just pretty much disintegrated. But I should say that uh, this, this Kenmore washer is just, it's run nonstop for 12 years. And aside from this bracket breaking, it's been a great washer. So. I'm hoping once I get this piece uh, fixed, uh, it'll have a lot more, a lot more life. I'll pro probably end up donating it to my church or, you know, to uh, Habitat or whatever. But anyhow, um, good washer. Just this one piece could probably be made a bit better. And again, it's a Kenmore HE HE three, I believe, washer, front loading washer. So here's our rubber gasket that's glued on here pretty good. And then here's our new bracket painted, screwed on on the sides there. And I put a little bit of the uh, high temp silicone just because I had some and it, it just adheres really super well. And I just put that over the welds just to make sure that don't get any rust there. So anyhow, the drum, I'll flip it upside down, insert it inside the back of the back. This is the rear tub, insert it down through there. And I was hoping that this would, this lip right here would ride behind this little lip right here. But it's gonna be tricky to try to get that to happen maybe. I'm not sure, because when I push it down, it may not, I may not have enough room there to get it to pop over that lip, so I may have to play with that. But once I get it, uh, that on, put the put the uh, front part of the tub back on, and put the washer back together. So we're pretty much done here, and the tub is back together. Uh, all those little, those little brass clips on the side down here they're all on this here just real briefly the shaft didn't come through as far as I wanted it because my bracket wasn't up quite high enough 
So I was concerned, so I ended up putting epoxy, prepping this and putting epoxy around here, or JB Weld actually. Then I filled this cavity with some JB Weld, drilled a hole down through into the shaft, and I, and I tapped it with the same uh, tap I used on the other on the brackets. And then I'm gonna just put a big washer on here and a screw. I wanna make darn sure that this does not come unconnected from the the main shaft coming out of the back of the back of the drum. Here's a look at the back of the washer. Uh, I've got it all put back together. It's supposed to snow tonight, about a foot, so I want to get my vehicles in the garage and get this done. And I've spent too much time on this as it is already, but uh, the drum spins pretty nicely. It just wobbles just a hair, so it should be okay. Wanted to show you a shot real quick down here. There's that hole that I drilled in the sh um, through the epoxy into the into the shaft. You know, I've tapped that out. I'm gonna put a wa big washer on it and a quarter inch screw in there and screw that down real tight. I don't want that uh, this pulley coming off. There's the motor down there with the, sh the shaft on it. So mechanically, it seems sound. It was working fine before I took it apart. So once it warms up, I'll get it tested out and make some comments to the YouTube video uh, later, maybe a month or so before I have a chance to test it to let you know how this thing works. If you can buy the part, I would definitely uh, take this project on, uh, without. but you can't buy the part as far as I know without, without buying the whole stainless steel drum, which is about 300 bucks. So it's, uh, that's unfortunate because it'd be about a, about a one day job if you can just buy the part, so. We're done, and hope this helps you out a little bit. I want to thank some of the guys who posted some other videos on how to take, take these apart. And there's a few other videos out there on how to make the bracket. That's kind of where I got some of the inspiration on this. And it's, it was just the, the dead of winter, and I was looking for something to do. So decided to take this on, and got it put back together, and we'll see what happens.